I thought it would be funny doing a little video about all the chaos about the Bond 25 production we heard about. You know, get a little chuckle out of it, and then be done with Bond 25 stuff until we got a title and a trailer. But no. More gossip and stories keep coming out about it. It's getting to the point where we're going to know more about the script than the writers do. Is there anything they can do to surprise any of us when we sit down in the theater and watch this thing now? All these stupid reports and clickbait headlines we see every other day. It's exhausting. I'm just going to sound like I'm repeating myself, but I wasn't keen on them doing a Spectre continuation. That movie left me not wanting to get into any more mining of those stories. This whole thing of linking Craig's movies and putting them under the hands of Waltz's Blofeld was a mistake. The weak explanation of how Bond and him are in this epic hero-villain duel because they went to summer camp together when they were kids, I mean, it was all very weak. Just because they were so eager to use Blofeld, they had to create some rushed importance between Bond and this villain, so they came up with them having a deep past relationship, and you know, it just felt flat. To me, this Blofeld pales next to Bond's encounters with Le Chief and Silva, even the tense scenes he had with Mr. White, who should have been the big bad protagonist in this run, when they decide to retroactively link all these movies into a great giant single story. We met him in the very first scene in Casino Royale. You know, like the one after the pre-credits. He was in the very first scene. There you go guys, use the Pale King as the big bad that this is all supposedly building up to. But you see, Mr. White didn't have a white cat. So they had to jettison him, unceremoniously, out of the series and bring in Blofeld and quickly establish him as the big bad. I don't think that worked out very well. I don't care for Madeline. I didn't care whether she was coming back or not. It's not really going to be anything special if they ice her and Bond goes after the baddies responsible for killing her. Since Craig has done that already with Vesper. The end of Spectre, Bond drives off with Madeline. I read that Sam Mendes said he designed that scene so it could be interpreted in two ways, leaving Babs and Mike some wiggle room for whatever they wanted to do with the next film. So we could have viewed it as Bond leaving MI6 and beginning a new life with Madeline, or that it was simply a more traditional Bond ending where the movie fades out with Bond and his leading lady. He's still on the job, but is now taking some R&R with the new babe on his arm. I don't know if there was as much wiggle room as Mendes thought. The scene of Bond chucking his gun walking away from M and towards Madeline on the bridge kind of cements in my mind as a declaration that he was done. A scene I read that Mendes changed, by the way. Originally, I read Bond was to walk back to M and turn his back on Madeline. I would have liked that so much better. But now, there's no longer any differing interpretations we can make about the end of Spectre. Bond 25 confirms Craig left and is now living in the sunset with Madeline. Oh, so this new news that everyone is up in arms about is that Lashana Lynch has filled in the spot of the agent number 007 since Bond has retired. Not sure if you heard about this. I mean, there's been a couple blurbs that have been written about it. When I first saw those snazzy headlines of this that were being spit out, I was confused by it. The way a lot of these, what do we want to call these places? I mean, they're not news places. They're like pablum makers. The way a lot of them tried to make it sound was the new James Bond was going to be a black woman. You know, like she steals his wallet and assumes his identity, I guess. I think at this point, everyone understands she's not the new James Bond. Daniel Craig is still James Bond. But now that he's retired, another agent has been promoted to take over his agent number of 007. So she's Agent Nomi, a 00 agent who is now using Bond's old 007 number. I mean, it's, it's not that complicated. We all get it, right? Okay, so now that we're clear on that, I still understand why so many fans are upset about this. 
I think a lot of people are making the distinction between the man, James Bond, and his agent number, 007. They view them as their own separate entities. And James Bond is not James Bond because of his agent number, and Agent 007 is simply a code number that Mr. James Bond uses. This might sound silly to some, but to a lot of folks, James Bond 007 is a package deal. Neither one is an optional extra. You get one, and the other comes with it automatically. And why would anyone possibly feel that way? Sean Connery, alias James Bond 007, is back in action. 007, it spells... Oh, oh, 007 times more exciting than your wildest dream. The character who runs rings around his enemies. The name that means excitement. Now he's here. When you get on his bad side, your number is up. You've been waiting for him, asking for him. 007, danger sign for the world's most famous gentleman agent with a license to kill. It's the most exciting 007 adventure of them all. You were expecting someone else? Welcome to 007.com. Come back and visit our site to get the latest James Bond news. I'll just generalize here. I think most fans get 007 is an agent number designation. We get that 00s die or leave and another agent fills their slot. Right, yeah, some of the novels have played around with this idea. Yeah, okay. But it's still not something anyone wanted to see when it came to James Bond 007 in the movies. You know when we'd see other double O's in the series pop up? Like, I always thought it was an interesting thing. Like, we'd get a glimpse of these other agents running around, you know, Bond's co-workers. They're out on their own missions, they're getting their own briefings. It was like a little glimpse into this bigger world that didn't just end with Bond. Throughout the series, we'd see, you know, like a different 009 or a 003. They would be replaceable agents. After Robert came to me, I sent 009 to kill Reynard. Two of our agents are dead. And that's for 009. While James Bond, 007, would be a constant. I mean, I guess I assumed if Bond were ever to die or leave, like a new agent 007 would replace him. Although no one did when he died in Skyfall. Yeah, but that was only for four months. This, this time it's going to be uh, four years and... Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, But it wasn't something I was ever curious to see. Somebody replace James Bond. Someone else get the 007 number. So now that they boxed themselves in with having him be retired, they're going to show us life has still been going on back in merry old England. And on Her Majesty's Secret Service is still running things. Lashana Lynch's Nomi has moved up in the ranks to fill his vacant 007 slot. As I said, I never cared to see anyone get the 007 number. It's a pleasure working with 007. Thanks. Maybe it sounds silly, but that number is James Bond's, and he's the only one who should ever have it. I never wanted to see anyone else get the 007 number. Anyone. A girl, a guy, a black or white or Chinese or... Anyone. Even if they dragged out Dalton or Connery to be in this, and we're told... Uh, hey, Craig Bond, well, since you left, we got this new guy to do your job, and he's now 007. I still wouldn't be keen on it. I mean, I know they're both old, but, you know, you know, you get what I'm saying. So they're going to do this. It just kind of feels like an easy way to get a reaction out of fans. Which they clearly did. And the timing of doing this falls into that social justice trend that's been happening with a lot of franchise movies lately. Had they done this 15 or 10 years ago, I don't think eyebrows would have been raised as high as them doing it right now. So I don't think it's unreasonable to wonder, why are they doing this now? Why? Okay, so are they giving her the 007 number because it's an important part of the story? Or are they doing it to send some kind of forced social justice 
identity political message that has become so topical lately. I'm leaning towards this being more of a social statement. And here's why. I can't think of any worthwhile reason why giving someone new, anyone, Bond's 007 number would be vital to any kind of story for Craig's Bond. Forget our outside perspective as fans and how we feel about the 007 number. We all feel it's important. We all use it as the combo to our cell phones and ATM and you know all that crap. We love the number. But to Bond, why would he care if someone else has his 007 number now? Why would he be bothered by it? Where is any drama coming from when he meets the new 007? He voluntarily left MI6. He knew he was giving up his 007 number when he hightailed it out of there with Madeline. So when he comes back to England and sees there's a new 007, he shouldn't be surprised, right? That would be like if I left my powerful job at a big Hollywood studio, place where I belong, by the way, and came back to visit four years later and got pissed someone else is using my old cushy parking spot. I knew when I was leaving the job, I would have to give up that parking spot too. So why would it bother me that someone new is using it? Or are they going to pull, he's surprised and a bit miffed because it's a black woman that now is 007. She's doing his old job? Why would Craig's Bond be upset or surprised about that? The last two movies, he's been working with Miss Moneypenny. Black woman, strong, capable, he trusts her. Or was he okay with Moneypenny because she wasn't using his 007 number? The number he resigned from, by the way, and shouldn't be giving a crap about. So now Bond has to work with a black woman again. But this time it's going to be more progressive because she not only has a double O position, a position where had she been given any other number, would have still been the equal status in movie terms as Bond's old position was. But she's double O seven, a number that Bond shouldn't care anything about, a number that has multiple contemporaries that are Bond's equals that they could have assigned to this character. Double O nine. Double O two, double O. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Craig's Bond, I would expect to be completely indifferent about this development. Really, it's been almost every movie he wants out of the service and wants to quit. Bond fans, I understand why they would be more upset about this than him. That 007 number means more to us than Craig's Bond. It seems like doing this was designed to get a reaction out of us rather than him. I still don't understand how this could be a vital part of the story. This wasn't just an excuse to do something stupid like, you know, Blofeld orders Rami Malek to kill 007 and Malek mistakenly goes after Nomi and not Bond. And Blofeld is all upset and I was like, I didn't mean her. Well, you told me 007. <laughs> is this one of those things where they're trying to placate these demands of turning James Bond into a woman, demands that I don't know who is supposedly making them. I've never heard anyone say, you know what the Bond series needs? For James Bond to be a woman. But they're not going to go that far. Like Babs reassured us, oh, James Bond, he should always be a man. But by giving a woman his 007 number and his old job, that's meant to accomplish delivering on this gender swap request and not upsetting fans who are against the idea at the same time. They think this move will satisfy the for and against crowd for this. Wrong. But so like now they're, they're, they're pulling this out and everyone who's not happy with this decision of them doing this are going to be pegged as sexist and racist, you know, and that'll be the defense for doing it even though they could have had anyone as a new 007 other than James Bond, and we wouldn't have liked it. Is that how this is going to play out now? That's become the routine, right? Now this is going to take all the spotlight about the movie, when most of us just wanted to 
go see Craig get into a car chase and have a fight on a double-decker bus, shoot some combustible tanks that blow up. I figure this will be a one-off for Nomi in this flick. Whatever the outcome for her in the movie, you know, we won't be seeing her again in any other Bond movies. They'll reboot the series in a few years with a new younger actor to replace Craig. And a spin-off? With Lashana Lynch? Really? Like... I don't really see Eon ever doing anything like that. I mean, they have enough trouble making one Bond movie. I mean, does anyone really think they're going to start a separate franchise? If they do, then it better be that Jinx spinoff movie. I've been waiting for that thing for like 17 years now. Like, where is Jinx? What is she up to now? Any more encounters with Windage for her? Really, if they were going to do a spinoff with a female uh, 00 or secret agent or whatever, Hallie was one of the most popular actresses around. She had just won an Oscar, she was getting huge press. I'd bet more on a movie series happening with Hallie circa 2002 than Lashana Lynch today. I don't even know who she is. I know she was in Captain Marvel, which I haven't seen. I never saw any of Fukunaga stuff. Phoebe Waller-Bridge, you know, I never saw anything she's done. I really don't know any of these people. I mean, maybe this is the dream team for a Bond movie. But still, I, 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 I just, I don't, I don't get this. I, what is the point to this? I don't understand why she couldn't have just been 003, or even given her the 001. I mean, that's a higher number than 007. And it would immediately have put her in the same position as Bond's former status. It would have left the 007 number alone, and we wouldn't have even had to go here. I can't imagine how they didn't expect this would get a reaction out of folks. I mean, they had to have known. I mean, unless Babs and Mike are so isolated in their producer bubble, I'm, I mean, they must know this wasn't done before. Well, maybe Mike might think it's a, a tradition, but it had to at least be a fleeting thought that, you know, not everyone's going to like this. I wonder if Boyle's script had a new 007 in it. This movie, I mean, I'm so exhausted from it, and they're still filming the thing. I hate to say it, but it's almost a feeling of indifference is rising with Bond 25 for me. It's like I just want to get through this one so we can start fresh with a new James Bond. If Babs and Mike had asked my opinion about this 007 thing, I would have told them... Make her a 003 or a 008. Don't let anyone else have his 007 number. Even, I would have suggested, introduce Nomi driving the DB5. Now she gets to drive it. She's a 00. He's not. There's a big Bond status symbol she could now have. I would prefer her having that than her having the 007 number. I'm starting to think that maybe Craig should have just retired after Spectre. We're almost up to five years waiting for him. Maybe they should have just used that time to start planning the next phase with a new actor. Five years for Craig to come back? I mean, how long until we see a new actor for Bond 26? Three? Four years? Maybe it would have been better if they had parted ways with him. Hold on a minute, let me just do my mantra. Oh, um, I just wanted a standalone Bond mission. Oh, um, that's all. Oh. Um. A single impersonal mission. Oh, um, maybe have a car chase in it. And then some folks have said to me, well, she better die, and James Bond gets back his 007 number. My thought on that is, does it really matter? Okay, let's look at this in the movie context. Bond is retired. He left MI6. He's been away for four years. He comes back to help Felix with some bad stuff going on. He's no longer a double O and has to work rogue. Again. Or he has to work with this new 007 for a bit. However they're going to do this. Say he tries to come back to the service. Again. Last time it was a pretty big challenge. Well, actually, he never technically passed his exams after being out of commission in Skyfall. M had to fudge his numbers, and that was only after him being away three or four months. This time, it's been four years he's been gone. 
he's going to somehow work his way back into his old 007 slot that is currently occupied, by the way. At age 50, he's going to start back up again. How many more missions does he have left in him? What are your thoughts? Say like he gets back into the service, but he can't get his 007 number because that's Lashana's. So he has to be assigned 002. Would that work for anyone? And say, even if he does all that, Lashana is killed and there's an open vacancy with his 007 slot. At the end, he gets back his 007 status and he's ready to serve Her Majesty's government once again. We sort of already saw that in Skyfall. And that time, he came back from the dead. Coming out of retirement compared from coming back from the grave? Doesn't that seem a little less dramatic a return for James Bond? And as Bond fans, we'd be watching this in the theater. The final scene coming up in Bond 25. Craig earns his 007 status back. It all looks similar to the Skyfall ending. Everything is back in place, and he's ready to work again. Just like how Skyfall teased us with all these future missions M is handing to him. That we never saw any of them. But this time, we can be sure we'll never see them because we know this is Craig's last Bond movie. This is going to be my last Bond, I think. I think I, I don't think I, I think I've done enough. People are going to get sick sick of the sight of me, um, and someone someone else should have a go. So him getting back to being 007, it almost feels moot to me. Like, insignificant. Like, it doesn't matter. We know Craig is leaving, and they're going to get a new Bond actor. They'll probably do a complete reboot with a younger actor for Bond, and Craig's Bond timeline is just going to fade out. So whether Craig gets back to working at his old digs, or just decides to go fishing, and Lashana becomes his replacement as 007, it feels like it makes little difference for the future of the series. Because this chapter in the Craig 007 saga is done. I don't see how any ending will be completely satisfying. That's why I wish they dropped this continuity crap, just started the movie with him still being 007, he chose that over Madeline, and now a new mission lands in his lap. That would have left open more possibilities of a finale for Craig. From there, you could have ended with him just retiring for good, and it wouldn't have felt repetitive from what we've already seen Craig do in the last movie. He leaves. He comes back. He's going to leave again. I mean, he's done all this. What kind of arc is Craig's Bond supposedly on? What are they talking about, an arc? The only thing left is to really kill the guy off, I guess. Or maybe make him the villain, and Lashana's 007 has to go after him. How would everyone like that? I knew I was going to start rambling about this once I started up. I mean, woof. Honestly, I don't even know if any of this is true or just more tabloid tripe about Bond 25. I don't know where this story came from or if it was ever confirmed. I think people are just running with it now. So now, between folks being upset and arguing about this, calling each other poopy heads, really, like, I would have much rather been talking about speculation of, hey, where might they place the gun barrel in this movie? Oh yeah, by the way, for those who are going to see Bond 25 opening weekend, please, please, pay attention to the audience when the movie first starts. If they have the opening gun barrel at the start of the movie, and Nomi is walking in it, I want to hear all about what the reactions will be from movie audiences. Can you imagine the amount of gasps and hisses there would be if they did that? Better yet, everyone, be ready to record the potential audience reaction in case this happens, so we can all listen to it later and have fun with it. <sighs> so on top of all this drama, we also now have to worry whether Lynch's Nomi is going to be a well-written, compelling character that we're all going to enjoy watching, or is giving her the 007 moniker going to be the sole reason why this character exists? Have that be her personality, and we're just going to be expected to find her character interesting just based on that. Nomi is going to be Agent 007. Okay? Is that it for her character? A female secret agent. 
This is nothing new. There's no ground being broken here. She's my protection. She happens to be with British intelligence. I get it. You're trying to get rid of me. And an extremely efficient one, too. As a matter of fact, I've established an observation post above Cantini Chateau. Mary Goodnight, Rosie Carver, Triple X, Holly Goodhead, Pola Ivanova, Wei Lin, Jinx. Remember Jinx and like, how fascinating the character she was? Tell us about your character, Holly. Um, she's tough. And I, the way I describe her, is she is the Bond equal. You know, she is the female Bond. That was her character's entire identity. Along with the fact that she's like a female Bond. Yep, that was pretty much it. Along with being annoying, obnoxious, and pointless to have in the movie. She was like a female James Bond. And so she's very much his equal, or like the yeah. female Bond, we like to Sounds call Sounds like her. a terrific so, uh, addition to the James we'll Bond see. films. How riveting. A lot of these franchises have been pulling that move of banking on a nostalgic connection audiences have to previous incarnations of franchises or characters, and they expect everyone will automatically love the new version or new addition to the franchise. It's like they cut corners and coast on by with sort of a, like a character shorthand, where they don't have to create new interesting fun characters who will stand on their own. The popular IP name and popularity of a series or a character is good enough. That association will be the crux of their existence for this new, hollow, forgettable character. Is that how things will go down with Nomi? She'll just be another jinx? Only this time, they just up the ante with this. She's not just got that killer description, she's like a female James Bond but they're now gonna reinforce it with her by giving her the 007 number. I hope they actually write her as a character and not just rely on her having the 007 number as the only reason we should care about her or find her interesting. Are they gonna give us a reason as to why we would want a Funko Pop figure of her besides her just having Bond's secret agent number? Or maybe we're not gonna be expected to like her. And these feelings of resentment that a lot of folks are having will work in the story's favor. She's really a villain in deep cover and we're expected to hate her even more than Blofeld. Could this just be a way for them to get some easy comedy of error jokes going here? Like you know in The Last Crusade, we got that little funny moment. Up the jumps. Yes. yes. Is that the kind of payoffs we're looking at from this? Yeah. She says she likes her martinis stirred, not shaken. She gets handed her gadgets from Q and you know, Bond gets jealous and gives him a little prissy look. Oh, what knee slappers that would be, huh? I mean, I think the Me Too movement has came at the right time. I mean, long overdue. So I think the film will absolutely incorporate that. Uh, diversity and inclusion is something that I feel very strongly about. It's very important that we make films that reflect the world we live in. And uh, so I'm very, I'm very excited about this film and the opportunities that we're presenting in this film. If Nomi means nothing in the story and is a lame character, and her being a 007 is just some kind of statement being made by the filmmakers, I'm sure fans will have something to say about it. It's just kind of disappointing. Like we've been seeing all these franchise movies doing this and alienating fans and getting woke, putting story and character second to social justice messages, resulting in garbage product. And now it's starting to look like it's gotten to the James Bond series. It stinks. What's wrong with just making an exciting, entertaining, action spy movie with our guy and letting us say adieu, Mr. Craig, with smiles on our faces? Is it really so bad to want that? Now we'll be potentially rolling our eyes throughout this movie. We could go on with speculating about this. I mean, we'll see how this all plays out. This could potentially be something fans will be talking about for ages. This could eclipse invisible cars, surfing tsunamis, Brother Blofeld, double-taking pigeons, the four elements, slide whistles, the codename theory... This is going to be a monumental Bond subject here on out. 
Um, standalone mission, please. Ah. So what else? Uh, oh yeah, so like, uh, the rumor is that Christoph Waltz is returning as Blofeld. Whatever. I assume it would be like, one scene. Maybe it'd be like a, a Hannibal Lecter thing where, they, you know, they question him about Malik or something. Try to get information from him. I mean, this rumor, it didn't put any wind in my sails. So I don't really have any feelings about it if it happens. Oddly enough, you, you remember when uh, Bond captured Mr. White and they were interrogating him about Quantum? Hmm. Yeah. So maybe they'll just repeat that scene, only this time it would be cooler because it's Blofeld, and he, he's the guy with the white cat. Welcome back, Mr. Waltz. Mr. White. They should have stuck with him as the big main villain throughout all this. Um, we see the DB5. It's coming back. Again. You know, big surprise. <laughs> I mean, I really hate to sound like such a downer with Bond 25, but I, like, really, nothing, nothing I've been hearing about has gotten me really excited about this. The short clip of Jamaica, yeah, it all looked nice and pretty, but really, I would have expected that to. It's all this stuff with the story and the characters that are making me cool on it. So they're bringing back the DB5, again. Like, I've said it before, I'm sick of the DB5. The specialness of it is just disintegrating each time they pull this thing out. It's getting overused. I'm tired of them using it as this nostalgic crutch. I'd prefer seeing them create something new than going back to the Bond treasure chest time and time again. And we know why they keep using the DB5. It's just fan pandering with its appearances. It's the best piece of Bond history that they can pull out and have the general audience recognize and it will get a reaction out of it. I mean, if they had a shot of a, a dove pin or a Fabergé egg or, you know, something less ostentatious and more subtle, it would probably go unnoticed by most movie audiences. So the DB5 is the most reliable prop they can drag out to elicit a reaction from everyone. Guaranteed, each time out. It never fails. Let's play something. Here's how I would open Bond 25. Hey Mike, you like continuity. You know, opening the movie one hour, 20 minutes, you know, after the last one and all that. How do you like this idea, Mike? Pre-credits, we pick up 30 seconds after the last movie. We ignore the four year real world time jump that's taken place. This is 30 seconds later, Mike. Bond and Madeline are driving away in the DB5 like we saw. They get to that bridge where Blofeld was caught on. They're just about driving over it, and suddenly, all hell is unleashed. Bad guys spray the DB5 with bullets, fire a missile at the thing, they completely shred it. We get rid of two albatrosses at once, Mike. The DB5 is destroyed for good this time. Q ain't fixing that sucker, and Madeline is killed. Bond ends up being wounded. He falls into a coma, being out of commission. Lashana steps in to fill in for him for a while. Bond wakes up, you know, a couple weeks later, determined to catch the baddies who did this. While he was slumbering, they found out Freddie Mercury is responsible and he's off and running to catch him. What do you think, Mike? Well, uh, no, I don't like that idea. It's simply not very traditional. So the DB5 is going to be back. Great. I mean, it's cool that Dalton's Vantage is going to be used. I mean, I always loved that car. I will admit, I never thought I would see that again in a Bond movie. I think its inclusion kind of signals how Dalton has gotten more appreciated over the years, too. You know, he's gotten a bit more respect now than he got at the time when he was doing Bond. Yeah, I like that. Um, and can we get some sacrificial lambs back, please? Spectre, everyone cakewalked through that movie. I mean, no notable good guys died. Monica Bellucci, like, they should have killed her off. But I guess they didn't want to be mean to the old lady, so she faded out from the movie. Are they trying like, not to have any good guys get killed in the movies anymore? That was always a component of a Bond movie. Bond's ally gets introduced. We meet them, like them, then feel bad when they're killed. Their deaths raise the stakes, the danger, make us boo the bad guy. Can we get more deaths, please? 
Maybe Lashana will be one. Or are they thinking they don't need one because Madeline's death will be enough in this one? That's another thing that's kind of funny about the return of Madeline. Does anyone else kind of feel like there's very little interest in seeing Leia Seydoux return other than having her being killed? It's kind of weird. The first time a Bond girl come, well, excuse me, a Bond lady. I'm sorry, I'm an ape. Bond girl, Bond woman, call her whatever you want. I call her a lame character. Unfortunately, whatever title they want to give her doesn't automatically correlate to her being a well-written, interesting character. The first time a Bond girl is coming back a second time, you know, not counting Sylvia Trench. And it doesn't seem like a big deal to anyone. Everyone is just wondering when and how she'll be killed and used as a plot device. I kind of think that's funny. I think it kind of shows just how special and loved a character Madeline is to folks. We all just want to see her die so we can get moving with a Bond revenge story. Poor Madeline. She'll face a tragic fate. How soon? Or maybe she lives. You know, I'm just rolling with the popular theory of what's going to go down. Maybe she'll hang around throughout the entire movie. I guess some folks would like that. Well, in this movie now, we're going to actually write her as a compelling character. Too bad you didn't do that when you first introduced her. I mean, that's another problem that's happened with the movies lately. This Scooby Gang thing going on. If they keep teaming Bond up with Q and Money Penny and Tanner in the field, the likelihood of anyone dying goes down. You know, if Q is breaking into the bad guy's warehouse with Bond, what are the chances Q will get iced? Compare that to a new ally that has been introduced for the sole purpose of being a sacrificial lamb halfway through the movie. Maybe in this one, since it's like Craig's last one, maybe they'll kill off Felix or Tanner or you know someone like that. I just hope some folks get killed off in this one. Every time I make a Bond film, I'm always thinking to myself, this could be the last Bond film. If we don't get it right, we could ruin it for the future. Of course, I'll still go see this. But, you know, I don't feel very confident with this one. And I was skeptical about Bond 25 long before this Lashana 007 news broke. For me, that's become Another thing that is making Bond 25 sound less and less interesting. Yeah, this picture of Craig, he looks cool, he looks good. But I'm still wary on this. If they had announced Batista's coming back for this, and him and Craig are going to have this huge, brutal fight, then my ears would be perking up. But so far, everything I've heard about it, you know, I've just shrugged my shoulders. It could all very well be a good flick. I mean, you can't really trust all this stuff that the press is spitting out. They could have some really good, unique ideas for this, and Fukunaga and everyone are excited about doing a Bond movie and are, and are just gonna execute it all beautifully. I hope the trailer looks good. We'll have to be getting that eventually, along with the title. No one has been talking about that for a while, the title. Maybe they've intentionally been holding it off because it will be something like, Know me, the new 007. Goodbye to the old. Hello to the know me. Property of a know me. Hit the bricks, Bond. We got a new gal in town. Know me. Now that rumored title, A Reason to Die, it's starting to sound more and more appropriate. I mean, if this ends up being a real drag, we might be able to trace the problems back to Spectre. I think that movie did a lot of damage to what would come after it. And it hurt the movies before it, too. It was like a twofer. Had that ended with Bond turning his back on Madeline and walking back to M, things would be so different for this movie. Madeline, of all people, who? All this could fall at the feet of Mendes. And this new continuity nonsense. Them landing the Blofeld rights back. I mean, it's almost been like a perfect storm of faux pas. I would easily trade Spectre and Bond 25 to getting to see that mission M hands to Bond at the end of Skyfall. I wouldn't care if it was about like a hotel owner short sheeting the beds. I would rather have seen that. Wait, I'm, I'm being unfair here. I'm forgetting something. There was a report they were filming a car chase. Yes. 
A car chase. <laughs> Dynamite. So we got something in the pro category for Bond 25. Round of applause. So, we'll see. Maybe it'll be good. Let's try to be optimistic. Every time we make a film, both Barbara and I take it that seriously, that if we screw it up, it's going to be the last Bond film.